Hey everybody out there, this is Chris Nicholson. You have reached part three of this video. And as you can see, it looks really, really good. And plus it looks a little different because I did add much more better legs, much more sturdier legs, and a more up-to-date liar, which is right there, the pedal liar. So, um, as I said, these I had laying around, so I didn't even bother to recreate because I had them laying around so I might as well put them to good use and as you can see the case it's basically almost built what I mean by almost built because you're gonna be still doing much more to it but uh, there's lots of stuff that I want to do today so what I wanted to show you is that um, I bought a piece of wood over here and this actually I got this from Home Depot surprisingly and it was straight and you don't have to worry about the knots or anything like that because as I said, you're gonna be doing re-veneering. Um, but this is gonna be the top of the piano. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make the top of the piano. And what I'm gonna also do is that um, if you're working and you wanna make it like a small baby grand, it doesn't have to be angled like this. As you can see, this side over here is a little bit inwards, it's angled. And this side over here is a little bit straight. And that's the characteristics of a concert grand. So what I'm going to show you is um, how to actually expand those cheeks, the cheek blocks right over here, because you're going to have to make them just a little bit bigger, um, depending on what kind of size keyboard that you're actually going to fit inside the piano. But we're going to cut this piece of wood uh, to the right length, and it's going to be awesome. All right, everybody. So right now I'm about to make the top of the piano. As you can see that I put it on top of the the wood on top of the piano casing that I'm building and it is long it's very very long that's how long that I want it you don't have to worry about the seal because you're gonna sand that off anyway um, or when you're veneering you have to sand that part off anyway or else it could stick out in the veneer so I have one dilemma which is that on this side over here which is the long side it's perfect and on the other side right over here the casing sticks out a little bit but that's okay because all the other recycled wood that I'm gonna cut after I cut the board I can use it to actually as a patch up job which is really no problem so I'm gonna cut the piece of wood for you and I'm gonna show you what to do okay everybody so here's a big big tip since you have the longest side on the piano you're gonna deal with the concert brand but the baby brand is gonna be a little bit shorter um, the rim, or so not the rim, or the, um, the top of the piano has to stick out just a little bit, more like an inch. So if you have a wood, piece of wood that is like an inch thick, that's good. This is more like an inch or a half inch. I mean, this is good for me. But what I do is I take a piece of wood and then put it right up against it. And I think that's perfect for me. So after that, I just, look and make sure everything is a little bit even and to me it looks like it's even so I really don't have to trace this side what I have to do is just trace around the other side of the piano hey everybody so trace around the room is gonna be a little bit a little bit difficult so to make things easier for me I take the magic marker the biggest one that I have and I have it attached to a board like this and then I start at the curve point and I can show you I start the curve part right over here and go very, very slow.
Okay, so right now I just cut around the rim. It's a little bit bigger than the shell itself, than the uh, casing. And I still have to do that part, which is no problem. But before I do that, what I had to do over here is that I had to measure like an inch away from the cheek blocks right here, from the top of the cheek blocks, basically. So if you look on this side over here, it's the same thing. From the top of the cheek blocks right over here, it's an inch away from it. So what I have to do is I have to basically just cut out my line from right there. And I'm going to put the camera down so I can show you of me tracing it. There we go. So what I have to do basically is, just in case if I get lost, here's my starting point right here. my ending point right over here. So that's good. All I have to do now is move this. I have to cut that out. Now the most important thing that you have to do is before you take off this lid, because you're not going to know what your positions are, you have to mark every single position that you do on, like from the shelf. So I'll give you an example. Here's the back of it right here. And I'm going to trace the whole position of the rim, which is the back. This is so if you were going to take it off again, you know exactly where to put it back on. And don't worry about this because the veneering is going to cover all of this up. So there you go. Trace the bottom of it, the bottom of the lid to uh, to match the rim, and I have to do the other side too, all the way to the starting point. Then, after that, we have to cut the top piece off, and then we could use the extra wood for other stuff. There would be no problem, which I can show you a little bit later. cut out that edge that I needed for the rest of the piano part and this when it gets sanded in it's gonna basically almost disappear especially when you put the veneer pieces on top of it and then resand it it's gonna basically disappear um, this right over here this is PVC glue 
and I got this from basically the shaft piano parts. This is the strongest glue for like heat tops and also for wood. So to join these two pieces together, I got my two clamps right here. One clamp right over here and one clamp over here. And to join these pieces of, of wood together, I'm gonna use my PVC glue, uh, put it on and let it dry overnight. Okay, everybody, so now here comes the measurements between two sides of your lid. You're gonna have your head and you're gonna have your tail. So, of course, your lid has to support basically your um, music desk right over here. The music desk, I say, is gonna come out to basically right around here. Yeah, right around here. So it has to be straight, number one. I have my leveler, which is basically my big ruler. So I'm gonna measure out basically an even three inches for both. So that's three right here, three right over here. And that's perfect. And over here, I'm gonna measure a little bit longer. And that's why I have this here, so I can draw the line. So, from the music desk to the end of this bar right over here, let's measure 18 inches. So we have 18 inches right here. And let me take a highlighter. draw where it's going to be. So 18 inches is going to be right over here. And let's do another 18 inches right over here. So it's 18 inches right there. Just a little bit more and that's going to be. And that's exactly how it's going to be. We get 18 inches from the lid, and this gives you room to put up the music desk if you wanted to, if you wanted to slide it back or slide it forward, which is really good. So now we just have to just draw that line, and since it's late, we'll cut out the um, we'll cut out basically the head and the tail, separate both of them tomorrow. So let's draw the line. And there it goes, everybody. For uh, tonight is I'm gonna glue that piece back on with PVC glue. All I have to do is just basically just uh, glue in between and then clamp it. And then tomorrow I will cut that line separating the head and the tail together. And that's it. I think that that is perfect. That is absolutely perfect. And I will show you basically, guys, what to do after that because we're gonna install the hinge on to the piano okay everybody it's a brand new day again and guess what the top has been made only one part of the top has been made there's gonna be another part which sits on top of it kind of looks like a beveled edge um, I don't have a router so what I do is I just create two tops of it so there's gonna be one right here and it's gonna be one that's gonna go almost to the rim and um, it's gonna sit on top of the top but it's starting to look like a piano as you can see everybody it's looking really really good and starting to look like a piano now I did put the action together there's a lot more authentications that um, I have to do with it if you're gonna use just a regular keyboard action you might want to work around that um, but I will make another video about the action um, probably in another video when I start working on it, but it was a, it was a lot of hard work. So everybody, this piano is starting to look definitely like a real grand piano. Um, now, if you're just going to use it as a prop and you want to put an action on there, 
do not play it, just use it as for like a Broadway play, stuff like that, and the actor's gonna play it, but not actually playing it. This is good. Um, also, not only for a prop, but now you get stability. So, I can sit on top of this piano and wiggle on it. It's, it's got a lot of stability. Me, myself, I'm 200 pounds, and for it to do this, it's perfect. So if I ever wanted to play the piano and have a singer on top of the piano, now you can. So remember when I was talking about the cheeks of the piano? These are the cheeks of the piano right over here. That's what it kind of gives it like a style. In the early days when pianos were basically forte pianos, they were just box. And it didn't show the hands at all, so somebody came up with this style to actually really show the hands. Um, this was my template, which I might still use. And I made a whole bunch of cheeks <laughs> for the piano. The reason of that is because, as you can see, the widthness of the keyboard is going to need just a little bit more fullness of the body. So, just to give you an example, there might be two of them here, and two of them on the other side. This right here. Which is, which is pretty cool. We just have to, I have to cut off the ends over here. Um, this has actually a little hinge right over here and it has a pin, so I have to take these out. So I'm just gonna lean them against here. Um, Cause what's gonna go right over here uh, in your empty spaces is gonna be your cheek blocks. So with the two I have here, one of them is gonna be a little bit straight to the keyboard. Um, and the other one is gonna be of course flush to uh, those other cheeks right over there. But it's gonna be basically almost like this. Now. No matter how it looks, it's still gonna look straight. What I need to do is I need to take off this piece of veneer right over here, and I need to sand all three of these down at the same time to make sure that they're all gonna fit perfectly. Okay, so what I end up doing is I extended out the cheeks a little bit and I sanded it down, as you can see right there. Now, as you can see, with the cheeks, there's a little bit of a gap, which is no problem. There's one right over here, and there's a even a bigger gap right here. So that's all gonna be covered up with the veneer. Once the veneer is put on there, like the peel and stick veneer that I'm gonna show you in a video a little bit later on because it's gonna take a long process to do, but we'll do little by little. Um, once the veneer is on there, it's gonna actually just make that gap disappear. And the reason that gap is there for is because remember I told you that the left side is angled a little bit. So I might have done it just a little bit too much on the gap, which is no problem because I can actually fix that. I can fix it early and then fix it late. This side's okay. Um, so over here, is the lid and so what I have to do is I have to sand down the sides I have to sand the whole lid down basically and I have to cut the head off of the tail so that's gonna be another uh, project that I have to do is cut that down and then sand the whole piano down
okay, as you can see, that's how the piano is going to look like if the lid is still closed and the head of the uh, lid is basically flipped up so the music desk can actually come around. Um, I'm looking at this cheek and I see that I did this angle going this way just a little bit too deep so I might have to recreate this bar again and it has to be basically flush to the top um, and that is basically to catch the fallboard so it doesn't flip back. <laughs> But this one is okay, so that's one. that one's no problem, that one's just a little bit too deep. That's my mistake. But, as you can see, looking at the, um, the lid of the Concert Grand, that you see that it angles in that way. And that's what I actually wanted. I wanted it to do that. Usually it's just a little bit, mine I want it to be just a little, a lot off angle because what happens is that the way how this piano is designed is that with that, with not just the lid, but the way how the piano is designed is that way that the left side just angles in a lot. And because of that, the reason I did that, I copied that off of Mason and Hamlin and Steinway. Steinway does the same thing, Mason and Hamlin on their hi higher grants does it. Actually Mason and Hamlin on all the grand pianos do it. The reason of that is because you're going to catch a lot of bass residents coming from this end because you have more of an extended soundboard. Instead of it going all the way around, all the bass is gonna be traveled to that end of the piano. And that's one of the reasons why I designed it like that. So this, I can correct. That's no problem, that was my mistake. Now, I want you to look at the way how I kind of designed them. I sanded down, I took off the veneers, and I sanded down the sections right here. But they're even, even though it's a little angled, they're even. And you can see it more this way. They're they're even. The cheeks are even. This like say for instance, it's not going both ways. I sanded it down so it's actually even with it. Uh, a lot of the contagrands, the higher contagrands, they have this cutaway right over here. It's like shorter on one end and higher up here. And that's normal on contagrands. On mostly a lot of Asian ones, it's basically the same thing throughout the whole thing, but it's still angled just like that. If you're gonna do a baby grand cabinet, you're gonna find a lot more curves than a straight side like this. You'll find probably just a little bit of a straight side, but more curves. But I tell you this, it looks like a professional piano, even though it's not fully done yet. So we got lots more to go. After designing all the stuff on the cabinet, there's going to be a lot of veneering, which is going to be in another video to do. The next process that I have to do is I have to make sure that the head and the tail are even so when they open. As you cut, it might not be even. And also there might be ridges over here, might be a little wavy. When you put on, say for instance, a hinge, just like this, a piano hinge, just like that, it's not going to work right. So what I have to do is I have to actually sand down the top to make it look almost like the bottom, which is no problem. So first thing I do is I don't have clamps. So what I do is not to the tip of it, but mostly to the middle right over here. I take a drill, I, yeah, I take a drill and I screw and just screw in. These two are connected. And don't worry because when you put the veneer in it, it's gonna all disappear. Same thing right over here. That's good. So both of these are connected at the same time. And then after that, I'm gonna take something straight, just like this. as long as the way how the um, lid is, and then take a line. And try to draw very, very close to the line. You know, this is gonna be the flattest side, so it has to be even. And 
and so I'm going to draw most of that off like that. My mark is now working, but I have to use a pencil actually to, to make the line. But I'll show you what to do next. This is what I recommend is a belt sander. Make sure that it's sturdy, it's not going anywhere because you're gonna need two hands. Once you turn it on, then you're ready to go. Here we go. That's exactly what you want it to do. I might have to get this edge over here just a little bit. But the rest, the wood is so hot because, <laughs> believe me, I sanded it to the max. Oh my gosh, it's so smooth. It feels like one piece of wood, which is really good. So, it took some time. I had to stop the video. It took some time. Um, you know, it's weird. One of my friends said, Chris, the way how this piano is looking, you made this one a lot better than your first one. And I'm starting to believe so. And this time I'm not doing any shortcuts. If I make a mistake, I do it all over again. But there it is. It's nice and smooth. That trusty little belt sander right here, oh my gosh, that's one of my favorite uh, tools. Actually, I'm gonna put the bottom piece first on, then the top one. The reason is that the top one, once I let go of those screws, that's when I'm gonna actually put on the top ones. So um, the bottom ones, you're gonna start with the ends first, and then go with the middle, and then work your way this way. If you if you go diagonally down this way, it might come out uneven. So I start with the ends first, one here, one two and basically two of the middle ones, and then just work your way down. So, here we go, we're gonna put on the hinge.
Okay, so after putting in the bottom row of screws in, um, what you want to do is make sure that your hinge closes properly. So if it does, you did a good job. So what I end up doing is I put a flat piece of board in between it and take my pencil and mark the areas right over here and right over here. This leaves room for the hinges. So when you're putting on the hinges, basically on the upper end right here, you're gonna have to hold down the board at the same time. And so what I usually do is I take my belt sander, something very heavy, to hold that down. Make sure that everything is even and ready to go. Then when I start down this section to that section, I move the belt sander. Here we go, time to install. probably getting and which is it gonna actually be hidden as you can see that the hinge is a little bit up above but right at this section some of your screws are kind of popping out just a little bit but you don't have to worry about that the reason of that is because that's when you're gonna put your top pieces which is the wood that's like this, so it's just, it's just basically a thin piece of wood on top of it, and it's gonna hide it at the same time, it's gonna lock it down. And so I'll show you how to do that in another video. Now the last thing for this video is that I'm gonna sand down the room and basically just the edges of the, um, the top. I'm not gonna do the full top around because that's all gonna be recovered again. So, gonna go around the room, make sure all the pieces and everything is sanded out evenly, nice and straight. And then just the edge of the top going all around the panel. And after that, um, that's when you're gonna cut out your bevel piece right there. If you don't have a router, there's another piece that you can put on top of it. It's almost like a bevel piece. That I usually put on top of my pianos, and I have to show you that in the videos. But just to close this video, that's exactly what I'm gonna do is just sand around just the edge because you don't know how big you want your bevel piece. And just go around the piano and just sand around just the edge of the lid right there. So here we go.
Hey everybody out there, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for watching all of my videos. Please do me a favor, click like, subscribe, follow me on everything. Um, if you go to Facebook, join me as a Facebook friend. If you can't, go onto my Facebook fan page. It's raining out here. Building a piano takes a lot of manpower. It takes um, a lot of sawdust, a lot of thoughts, a lot of drawings. And I tell you this, it's a lot, a lot of work. But this video is to be continued. So do me a favor also, please subscribe to my friends. Um, one of my friends is Bradley, which is called The Brad. He's a keyboard enthusiast and he plays keyboards. He gives his opinions on them. Me and Bradley, we know each other for many, many years. And please uh, like, follow, follow notifications and subscribe to this channel. And also, to my friend Mike Lonely, which is keyboard crazy. And I tell you this, you have to see his keyboard collection. It is phenomenal. Michael, he knows about a lot of keyboards. He mostly specializes in Yamaha. And I tell you this, he is just amazing. I wish I lived close by both Bradley and Michael so I can meet them. Maybe one day I will end up meeting them one day, but they are such good people. And please subscribe to them. So, until I get more supplies, until probably next week, to be continued. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a nice day.